So uh, I'm going to show you different ways that you can get on bacon. So I think I got to go way over here. Hopefully you can see. So one, no, is you. J I get up in front of them and I just pull them forward. Make sure you get them square. If their feet aren't even when you go to get on, then sometimes the horse will take a step and it's just because they're trying to stabilize their weight underneath you. So I try to make sure they're straight. If they're not, you can tell them to park. Hello. Oh, good boy. Now he's square. And then I'm gonna get on. At home, I might get on with a loose rein, but if I'm out on the trail or somewhere new, like at your place, I'm gonna get on with a short rein. So he's just looking for cookie. When you get on, you put your toe in your stirrup. Some people don't know this. Then put your toe in the girth, not in the horse's side, because that makes him walk away. So when you put your foot in the stirrup, put your toe in the girth, and then look up and diagonal, because it'll help you get on. So I'm gonna look up at the tree, and I push myself up, and then I land soft. Okay, so he knows lateral flexion. That's why he's turning his head shh, side to side, okay? But now I'm gonna do it with him. So I just pull on that rein towards my right hip, and then once his head turns, I let go of the rein. So left rein, once he turns his head, I let go. They don't have to turn it all the way back like that. And if they do, never get, let them get their foot by your stirrup, because it can get stuck in there. Their head can get stuck in there. So I pull on the rein. If he pulls back, I just hold. Like there, you just hold. No, sit. And now I'm pulling on this side. So I am pulling in the red part on the rein. So I hold my rein up at the buckle, slide my hand down, grab the red part, see him pull back. You just pull, hold it till he gives. Sometimes if you pull too hard, they will spin around in the beginning. But if he hits the mounting block, he will not care. Unless it's immovable, because this one's plastic. So he knows this one won't hurt him. So you want to keep doing it until they do it well and they're not pulling back. Lots of horses have a bad habit no, of uh, yanking on the reins. Um, and that's because they yank on the reins and then the person lets go. So if they ever pull on the reins, like right there, you just hold again and make them do it longer until they give and then you let go. And then you can just sit here on a loose rein. So if I'm riding on trail, my reins are short and the horse pulls down, I give a quick jerk in their mouth to make it uncomfortable. And every time they pull down, I give a quick jab up. If they pull down and you hold, they just pull harder because they're bigger, they can do it, and then you just end up in a tugging war. So you wanna make it uncomfortable by a quick jab up if the horse is ever yanking on your reins. Now it's different when I'm doing this lateral flexion, so now I'm talking about if you're riding. If they pull down, I hold until they give, and then once they give, I release. Um, sometimes when you're riding next to other horses, especially babies, they're trying to establish dominance, they'll give a nasty look to the other horse. That's a sign that they're gonna try to establish dominance. So if they give a nasty look to the other horse or pin its ears, leg your, your horse over or move his hindquarters over, and then straighten out his head and jab him a couple of times with your heel or your spur because you're trying to make that behavior uncomfortable. If you don't catch it and let it, sooner or later the horses will kick at each other or try to bite each other. Um, so you want to establish that you're the leader and they just need to pay attention. Sorry, I'm trying to give you all these tips. Okay, so that's me just leading him up to the mounting block. I do it in front of him. So now I'm going to get back off. I'm going to take my foot out. I'm going to lean forward, take my other foot out and then slide down till I feel the mounting block or you could do it on the ground, but he's okay that way, good boy. So now I'm gonna do the sidle up. I'm gonna put my dog in the car, nope, come on. So when I do the sidle up, the big difference is I put the reins over their head to start, so he knows it's something different. Then I'm just gonna walk up to the mounting block, and when I do, I'm gonna stand on it, then I'm gonna wiggle my right finger kinda up in the air so he can see and then I'll smooch to him. If that didn't work, I'd have a stick, but I don't have one right now, so we'll see. I'll get a stick if we need to. And then if that didn't work, I'd tap them in the very top of their buttock, just tap, 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 and every time they take a step over towards me, I stop tapping, but that's also in the sidle up video. So I'm gonna walk off. I'm gonna take my right hand past the reins to my left hand. Now I'm gonna raise my finger. Whoops, he got a little close. I'm trying to make sure you can see. 
So I'm gonna wiggle it. He's like in outer space. Good. So now he brought himself closer so I can get on. And that's all you're trying to do. Sometimes they get so close on the mounting block, they kind of bump you off. Okay. So that's the side of love. Good boy. So I'll do it one more time. But it's just the sidle up means the horse is coming closer to you. So I'm going to walk up on the mounting block. I'm going to kind of push him over here. Now I'm going to wiggle my finger. Now I'm going to smooch. Now I'm going to tap him in the top of the buck because I don't have the stick. So you're just trying it. When he comes towards you, that's when you release. Okay. Good job, buddy. All right. You can have a little cookie. All right. So I'm going to move this so you can see. So now we're going to do some exercises on gait. I don't have a lot of viewing here, uh, but I'll try to talk you through some of this stuff. So I'm just going to get on him from the ground. Remember, you're going to put your foot in the stirrup, but then put your toe into the girth. Otherwise, you'll cause your horse to walk away. So see him coming towards me? It's because he knows how to sidle up. So if he comes towards you, don't smack him. If you smack him, he'll come more towards you. And he's trying to do the right thing. So short and rain, put your foot in the girth. Put your toe in the girth. Jump on three. And up you go. And you're looking up ahead. You always got to keep your eyes up. Okay? And always stand there. If your friends are waiting, you don't care, stand there. Because once you start getting on and walking away, the horse stops standing and just starts going all the time. All right. So first I'm just gonna walk by back and forth on a loose rein. So I'm just both squeeze both legs to go, look up, keep after him until he goes forward. So even though you're at home, he's staring at the new buckskin horse, pork chuck. You want to keep your horse looking straight and just stay relaxed, sit up nice and tall hold a light leg pressure so he knows to keep going. When you take your leg off, sit back and breathe, then he stops. Now he's trying to go back over the tie-up because he got cookies over there. And we haven't like worked over here before. So you just say no, see him pulling, that's okay. You just hold till he stops pulling, then you release. All right, so we're gonna start doing a flat walk. All you're gonna do is ask for like an extended walk, a faster walk. You're gonna hold in the blue area, just a light, contact to keep his head straight keep him paying attention if he's throwing his head up or pulling on the reins you put pressure on it when he puts his head down release a little bit and then at the end if you're doing a short thing like this you could do a turn on the forehand at each end because you're trying to make this barn a miserable place to be by his friends who'd rather be out on the trail but you got to prove that to him why okay so i'm going to hold in the blue i'm going to bring my energy up squeeze with both legs if that doesn't work i got little spurs on so i'm going to spur him a little bit hide a stick on your saddle if you don't want to wear the spurs otherwise he's fine with spurs you only use them when you need them okay they're just for backup so I'm gonna to turn to the right so it's a little right rein a lot of right leg his front feet should stay somewhat still the back feet pivot around so a little right rein little right leg if he won't move then more right leg if he starts to walk away I hold with both reins if he starts to drift to the left I block him with my left rein and my left leg right at the girth 
So my right leg's gonna be behind the girth, my left leg will be right at the girth. And you always have to look. So I'm holding in the blue, close to the red. I'm gonna look towards you, a little right rein. Now it's all right leg. Now I'm gonna stop him, because it's easiest for people to do it in pieces. Now I'm gonna look right, but his head's already turned a little to the right, and right leg. Now see, he pulled a little bit, so I just held. Now I'm gonna do it again. I can't tell if I'm in the video. So there he got, he got like, what am I doing? Okay, so I'm gonna try it again. We're gonna look at core shop, right rein, right leg. Oh boy. Right rein, right leg. Good job, buddy. So they really like praise, so you might sound a little stupid, but lots of scratches and praise are just as good as a cookie. Okay, so turn on the forehand, practice it all the time, because if your ever, horse ever tries to rear off, take off, bolt, or just won't stand still, it's a good thing for your horse to do. Again, if its feet can't, um, if your horse is moving all around, like a car is coming by, if you get good at it, you can push them right, then you can push them left. It looks like they're dancing. But if they can't plant their feet, they can't rear up, okay? So now we're gonna do it off the left side. So I'm gonna hold the blue close to the red. We're gonna look left, up toward chop, little left wing, left leg behind the girth, and push. Good. Good job. Now he's moving a little bit, so I'm holding him. Good, now this side he goes, see this side's easier for me, Gay. Okay? Why is that? Because people work more on the left side. So there he just did a 360 and it was easy, right? But the right wasn't so good. So I'm like, well, that was great, baby. But guess what? We got to do it on the right side because you're not as good on that side. So now I'm going to go back to the other side. So a little right rein, a little right leg. Okay. Go boy. A little break and then more right leg. Hold the front end so it doesn't drift. A little right rein, a little right leg. Go boy. Okay, that's your turn on the forehand. Okay, so that's what I'm doing at the end so he gets better and better. But again, a horse can know how to do it and mess with the new owner and pretend they don't know how to do it. So you saw he can do this. Now we're going to go to our next gate. He's going to feel a little bounce in his step, forward walk. It will be going more towards the foxtrot. And you just want to pick a speed that you think is comfortable and work on it. If every time you try this next speed, they keep trotting, you're getting a hard bounce. It means you're going too fast for your level with that horse, even if I could do it with the horse. Because again, I have more time and feel with the horse. So you need to stay slower, that's all. So I'm gonna walk back and forth and slowly I'm gonna speed up a little bit. Okay, here we go. So walk forward, look up. If they get crooked, you straighten them out. That's why I'm using wide reins. And then forward with both legs evenly or they'll go crooked. And I should think because I'm going by the stall so it'll get better as I go on. Remember, practice your, see, sidling up to me. Uh, the turn on the forehand a lot. Now we're gonna do the turn on the haunches. That helps you to move a horse's shoulder. So if you're on a trail and it serpentines back and forth, or like when you're cantering to move his shoulders over. So it's important to know, but for the trail, the turn on the forehand is much more important. Okay, this one is harder for everybody and make sure you do it at a different time. Don't do your turn on the forehand and then do this, because everybody confuses the horses. So I want his shoulders to move. So both my hands are gonna come in. My right leg is now gonna be right at the girth to push his shoulders over. My hands are gonna be wide and bringing them over. But it's best if you have a trainer help you because people confuse them. Okay, so I'm gonna look, sitting on my seat pockets, 
right leg, hands out, good boy. Okay, so now I'm going to start over because I don't think I'm in the video. Let's do it over here. Okay, so hands over, right leg right at the girth. Look where you want to go. Push your shoulders all the way over. And I'm holding a little bit so he doesn't walk away. And now I'm going to go the other way. Hands towards the shed. Left leg on, looking where I want to go. So that's how you control their shoulders. So again, you, there he moved his hind quarters. You know, you might not be able to feel that, but I can. So I'm going to keep going. Good boy. Good job. Now I'm going to back up, so I'm going to pull. When he does it right, I'm releasing. So pull a little leg if he doesn't go. Pull if he doesn't go, a little leg. Pull, a little leg. And then I'm always releasing every time he takes a step. Good boy. Good job, buddy. Anyway, I gave him some cookies in the beginning, so now he always thinks there's cookies. So if he turns his head, don't get mad or kick him in the head. It'll slowly go away if you don't give cookies. So I'm going to walk forward and go back again. Remember when I go back, I pull, I lean back a little bit, look over their head. If they don't go, I might pull just a little bit more. And then if they don't go, I add leg. So pulling tells them the direction backwards and then my leg tells them to go. And then I release every time they go backwards a step. Okay. So we're going to pull. He got confused because I was doing the turn on the forehand and stuff here. So I just straighten him out with my legs. Pull, let go, pull, let go, pull, let go, pull, let go. Good job. So again, when you're doing sideways stuff, they can get confused and they go, well, she's pushing with that leg, so I think I'm supposed to move over. So pull, let go, pull, let go. He's getting crooked, so a little right rein, right leg to straighten him out. Good job. Okay, so now we're going to go to his racking gait. So I'm going to pop his head up a little bit, sit back on my seat pockets, and then I'm going to push him a little bit faster than that fox trot. So sit back like you're sitting in a chair. Half off if it gets bouncy. You should feel a side to side motion. The horse's head should be up slightly. So this is the hard part because, um, you know, the camera's not following me. So I'm going to try and show you over here what I'm doing. I can do it straight from a walk and shoot forward into it. So your fox trot their heads down like that. So what I do, say I'm walking, I go, I want to rack. I sit back, so more weight on their back end. And then I'm going to pop his head up. So I'm going to take one rein like that. As soon as it comes up, I'm going to hit the gas, and what I should feel is this motion, side to side, like you're stepping in one stirrup, you step in the other, step in one stirrup, step in the other, that's the motion you're feeling. So I, what we do is when we go to go, I pop his head up and then I hit the gas. If as I'm going it gets bouncy or he goes towards the fox trot, I pop his head up more, I hit him a little bit with my spurs. Spurs usually seem to help more than um, heels when you're trying to get the rack. So, when you hit them a little bit with their spurs, they go, oh, and they kind of put their back in dead and they go forward. So um, I'll try to do it right as I pass here, but I don't know if it's going to get it. Okay, so we're walking. Here I go. I'm going to pop this head up, hit the gas. So I'm walking. I'm going to pop this head up, hit the gas. Here I go. Hopefully that got some of it. So when I canter, I ask him with my outside leg, so that'll be the leg next to the wall um, in the arena. And what I do, just like I said on the trail video I sent you, I give a half halt, shift my weight to the outside, outside leg. If he doesn't go, I immediately hit him with my spur or my stick. Then what I would do is practice, you know, cantering in a circle, but what I would do, or have Rachel help you, I'd canter four or five steps, walk, 
walk a couple of steps, ask for the canter again. That'll keep the horse rocking back on his back end, so it'll make his canter better. It'll also give you time to steer. So when you're against the wall, you'll be pretty good. When you're cut across to make the circle, that's when you gotta support the horse's shoulders or they'll pop their lead in the back. So that's the best part to walk and then canter off again. Then as you guys get better and he gets it, it'll get better over time. Our arenas are hard because they're slanted. So if it's going downhill at all, their canter will be bad and you'll be like, this horse can't canter. It's not that, it's that the arena is slanted downhill or the footing's bad. So you sometimes, if your arena's not even, you gotta find the right parts of the arena to do it. So I will do a cantering up here, I'll ask him. But what I'm gonna do, is you won't see it in the video, is half halt, I'm gonna shift my weight towards pork chop, so to the right, and I'm gonna ask with my right leg. I can't do it the opposite way because it's going downhill, so it just won't be good. Gated horses don't canter well downhill. <laughs> they fall apart and they just gate. I can't do it because it's downhill and you might look at it and say it doesn't look downhill. Even a little slant can make them not canter well. So I'm going to try it again. Canter. 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 Okay, so hopefully it showed some of that. So with them, um, I just asked with my outside leg. If he doesn't go, ask him harder, say the word canter because he knows it, and then stick or spurs. Once you get the canter, use both legs to squeeze to push him forward. In the arena, you're going to probably have to push every step because remember, I push them to go, I stop riding for them to stop. So once you get the canter, then every time your butt hits the saddle, give a little squeeze with your calf. It doesn't have to be hard, just so he knows to keep going. When you take your leg off and stop riding, he'll stop. If you just use one leg, he might go sideways, okay? Um, still recording. So now we're going to do our side pass. So he knows how to leg yield, which is the same thing, except it's at a walk. stays on until he takes a step over and then I take it off every step he does the right thing so I always tell him pressure to go and then you did the right thing by taking it off so on off on off now I'm gonna go the other way so hands to the left right leg on off on off so right leg on off on off you might not be able to see his legs in the video but this is the best I can do for where I am. Okay, so back up. So pull, let go, pull, let go. Good. Side pass, left leg on, off. On, off. On, off. He's stuck, so I kicked him a little bit. On, off. Now we're going to go the other way. So hands to the left, right leg on, off. On, off. They sometimes step on themselves and sometimes do it crooked. It's because they're lanky, okay? They're not stiff like the regular horses. Good boy. Back up a little bit. So pull, let go, pull, let go. I'm going to give him a break, and I'll do it one more time. But you have to practice this stuff. It's best to practice it in front of a wall or a gate or something because then they can't walk forward. So it helps you when you're learning. Otherwise, you've got to be able to hold them. So I'm going to put the left leg on, off, on, off. If they throw their head, hold their head. When they stop throwing it, you release. Now off my right leg, on, off, on, off. So it comes from your leg, not your hands. Your hands just tell you the direction. Okay. Bacon's like, oh my god, I don't want to be at the barn. And then just remember, when I ride them, I push them to go. So anytime you're gating, it's both legs. Anytime you're cantering, it's one leg to ask, and then both legs to keep them going. Um, anytime they do something right, I give them a break for a little bit, let them sit on a loose rein as a reward or scratches and praise. So if you're working on something and they do it right and you don't stop and praise them, they won't know that's the right thing. So immediately they do something right, you've been trying to work for, immediately stop, praise them, make a big fuss, then the next time you can go a little bit longer and a little bit longer, but that helps them to understand much quicker. Um, 
So again, when I go to stop him, let's turn your shoulder so they can see. See, sometimes he wants to throw his head a little bit. A lot of them do that when they're older and I get them. You just hold, don't release. All right, so when I go to stop him, like I'm riding him, and I'm gonna ride him when I'm going faster, I'm gonna have my hands up by the red, but not in the red. But otherwise, if I'm doing easier things, my hands will just be in the middle of the blue. So I'm riding, and when I go to stop him, this is what I do. I take my legs off, my seat's totally relaxed. I take a deep breath in like that I say whoa and then if they haven't stopped then I pull if you do that every single time then when you relax and take your leg off they will stop if you do it just a little bit say the horse is going fast and you're like he's too fast and you just go and lighten your leg a little bit they'll slow down you won't even have to pull on them so it looks like magic so the better you get at that the better the horse gets if every time you stop your horse you pull on your horse you will always have to pull on your horse it's like every time you ask your horse to go if you kick them and don't have spurs or stick to back up your leg, you will always have to kick them. So if I squeeze, but then he ignores me and I back it up with the stick or the spurs, he'll start realizing when I squeeze, if he doesn't go, something else is going to happen. And I don't want to waste my energy on kicking, and kicking is like punching them in the side. So that's not nice. And people think spurs are mean only if you kick them with them. Otherwise, it's just a little poke in the side, which is much nicer than kicking. So I don't know why people think that. Okay, so remember, bring energy up to go. Bring your energy down to stop or to slow down. So you can be cantering and you're like, oh my God, he's fast. And don't panic, just go. <sighs> Take some of your leg off, relax your seat. He should slow down. And then if he doesn't, you half alter your pull. But always think anytime the horse is fast, upset, something's going wrong, Breathe and relax first, because a lot of times it's coming from us. Okay. All right. Um, I think that's it. Remember when you get off, some people leave this foot in the stirrup. Don't. When you get off, you know, swing over. You can hang on. He doesn't care. Take your foot out, and then always slide down slow. Right? Good job. So. Those are some, again, so you can gate in just little areas. You just go back and forth and then practice your turns at the other end. And again, this is overwhelming in the beginning. Don't worry about it. Just start with some of this stuff. Keep going back, watching the videos over and over, and then someday it'll click in. You'll be like, oh my God, I got it. This is awesome. But in the beginning, you know, sometimes things get messed up. The worst thing that's going to happen is probably that he might trot. So that means slow down because his gait is underneath that trot. Um, if he pulls on the reins, you just hold. If he pulls down, you kind of jerk it up. If he goes crooked, you make him straight. You know, it's just basic concepts. But in the beginning up there riding it, you're like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. It's so different from the other horses. It'll come in time. You can always call me, questions, uh, ask me to make a video on something and I can do it, okay? Um, but as horses go, He's pretty easy. He might be spunky there in the, you know, because it's cold there in the beginning, but doing that sending exercise I did, and hopefully someday I'll be able to show you how to lunge him. <laughs> and then I'll show you quick ways to get it out. Because if you just, if you lunge him and you just keep him going the same direction for 10 minutes, that's not gonna wear him out versus you go one or two circles and turn them, or one circle, turn them, one circle, turn them. That wears them out much faster. So, and to me, it's all about getting their attention, getting them to pay attention to you. So when you get on, they're not out there in space doing crazy stuff. Um, some people, you know, lunge their horses, then they just sensitize it more. It's a little bit of sensitizing and then a lot of desensitizing. And if they're getting too dull, then not as much desensitizing and more sensitizing with making them move. If they're too spooky, it doesn't always mean run them harder and wear them out. It means you got to desensitize them, more turns, more paying attention. Okay.